John Cena has announced his retirement in 2025. The man who cannot be seen is gone in an in-ring capacity. These are the 10 things that must happen to John Cena or with John Cena throughout his retirement year because we got him from January all the way to December. First thing that must happen, he has to main event WrestleMania. Come on, guys. We gotta let John Cena main event WrestleMania. Nobody has been on top longer than John Cena at such a capacity wrestling all the time. John Cena deserves it. And we got two nights of WrestleMania now, so it's a no-brainer. Give him night one, if not night two, of WrestleMania main event. Who's it going to be? It could be thrice in a lifetime with The Rock. Maybe we do AJ Styles get a technical masterpiece on his WrestleMania resume because AJ Styles and John Cena... They just had classics. They had three matches, and all three of them were just mwah, chef's kiss. AJ brings the best out of John Cena, or we do Randy Orton. That's right. RKO and John Cena, they had some wars back in the 2000s. Yeah, people right now are thinking that Randy Orton is a nice guy. You know, like, oh, that's, a, that's my cool uncle. Well, Randy Orton used to be a real jerk. For real. He punt kicked John Cena's dad. Okay? Let's get that Randy Orton back at John Cena for their main event because those guys, they went to war, but they never did it at WrestleMania, so we can correct that right now, main eventing night one or two of WrestleMania with the Viper. Or, this leads into number two, John Cena could main event with Cody Rhodes, because the number two thing John Cena must do is pass the torch to Cody. Cody is definitely the face of WWE moving forward. He's going to be the face for probably the next five to ten years, so let's have John Cena actually pass the torch. Yeah, face versus face match, they're not the greatest, but they do serve a purpose, and for John Cena to pass the torch to Cody Rhodes would be huge. We could do it at WrestleMania. Easy way to solve that is to just be like, John Cena wins the Royal Rumble, and he chooses Cody. Cody then, he exits the Bloodline feud for WrestleMania, and then that's where the Civil War of the Bloodline completely explode, where we have Rock versus Roman. Those two are fighting there, and Cody and John Cena are fighting over here. And yeah, John Cena loses, passes the torch. Before we get to the next number, though, I need you guys to comment and subscribe below. You'll get a chance to win one of those belts or the Smoking Skull belt by just commenting. Once I hit 10,000 subscribers, I will reach out to you somehow, and I will contact you and say, hey, pick a belt and then I will ship it to you. For real, these are replica belts, not toys. Let's keep going with John Cena. The number three thing to happen is he has the U.S. title open. So he loses against Cody, but he wins the U.S. championship. Now, he has won the U.S. championship in the past, and unlike others who would view the mid-card title as a demotion, no, John Cena took the U.S. title ball and he ran with it. It was so cool. John Cena had a U.S. championship open, and we got to see mid-card, lower mid-card, and higher mid-card guys fight John Cena, and we normally wouldn't because John Cena definitely a main event player with the mid-card title, and so he was fighting mid card we got to see matchups we weren't really accustomed to with John Cena. We could do that again. We could have four weeks on Netflix with John Cena fighting Braun Breaker, Chad Gable, Bobby Lashley, Carmelo Hayes, all these guys. And then at a pay-per-view, he actually will lose the title. But it would have just a really cool feel of a second round of the U.S. title open challenge. That would just be amazing. Number four, hear me out because your gut reaction is going to be like, oh, I don't like that. But he's going to acknowledge Roman Reigns. For real, Roman Reigns is going to come back a good guy, right? He's going to come back a good guy. And I think it would be cool if John Cena and him had a face-to-face, -face, maybe not a match, but a face-to-face -face where John Cena says, you know what? respect. I acknowledge you, Roman. Now, he's not acknowledging Roman as an inferior or that Roman is even superior, but he's saying, I acknowledge you. Game recognizes game. And John Cena was the man, and Roman was the man. Roman carried us out of 2020, the toilet paper scarcity of 2020. That was Roman Reigns who took us out of those dark ages into where we are now. And John Cena... 
he can throw up the finger and say, I recognize you, Roman. I recognize you. And we he can refer back to how he just, he slammed him in past promos. And now he's like, yeah, we're equals. That would be so, so cool. Number five, Logan Paul. Do I need to say anything else? Logan Paul versus John Cena. I don't care how it happens, make it happen. It could start at the US Open Challenge, the US Title Challenge. I don't care how it starts, just make it happen. And what could be cool is, what if this started kind of at Royal Rumble and throughout the entire year, in and out, Logan Paul was a menace to John Cena's final year. That would be kind of really low-key cool that, you know, they could have matches here and there or run-ins, and Logan Paul is just kind of just feeding off making John Cena miserable. Not to the extent of CM Punk to Drew McIntyre, but kind of like that, where we don't necessarily have to have matches all the time to continue this feud. And then finally, they do have the blow-up, and it's just amazing. Eh, that would just sell. That would just sell tickets and be just media everywhere. Logan Paul, John Cena, that's a feud. Has to happen. Has to happen. Number six, he has a tag team championship win with R-Truth. R-Truth is <laughs> somehow he's everybody's low-key favorite wrestler. In the past, he could be cringe, but somehow, some way, he found that sweet spot of being humorous in wrestling where everyone just sees him as just this gem that must be protected. We all love oh. our truth And he has this running gimmick where he does the five wounds of doom. And he says that John Cena was his childhood hero, even though he's older than John Cena. Yeah, so let's have our truth John Cena, win the U.S. title together so our truth can win the title with his childhood hero. But... This leads us into number seven. This would be so cool. They lose the title somehow in a table match. I don't know how it gets there, but John Cena goes through a table. Maybe R-Truth actually even spears him accidentally through the table, and then CM Punk comes out, and number seven is CM Punk does a pipe bomb right before Money in the Bank on John Cena. If you don't know, the pipe bomb is the interview spot. The pipe bomb happened. That's what put CM Punk on the map. That's what made CM Punk basically who CM Punk is now. What you see of CM Punk started at the pipe bomb. It was a sit-down promo that he did on John Cena after John Cena had lost to R-Truth in a table match. And he just laid into everything of wrestling and let's fast forward to 2025 right before money in the bank cm punk does another pipe bomb on john cena but this time it's a respectful one and just laying into all of the things that john cena did for the business the company just people in general 600 make wishes 650 make a wishes that would be so cool so cool of see a punk doing that now where would the heat be we don't need the heat this is honoring a man who has honored us with his talents with his skills with his drive his mentality just being a locker room leader leading by example john cena deserves everything and cm punk lays it all out there for john cena and we don't even tell john cena this is happening just like we didn't really tell anybody that cm punk was going to do that pipe bomb back then and that will lead into a cm punk versus john cena match at Money in the Bank, and they can do a bunch of callbacks to their original match at Money in the Bank so many years ago, and it would just be cool. It would just be fantastic. And CM Punk's in a different place now. He's Nice Guy Phil. Nice Guy Phil's gonna do a nice thing for John Cena. I would just be, mm, that would be so cool. Nice pipe bomb, number seven. Then we do number eight, which is kind of a two-prong thing. He's going to win the King of the Ring. Yeah, John Cena's gonna win the King of the Ring. And I know King of the Ring, it's good to elevate people, but we're just gonna have to pause it for one year in the elevation and give it to John Cena. And this will again allow us some matches that we might not normally see and this time it can be with faces not just heels trying to get the u.s title against a good guy john cena no this time it's in a tournament and whatever happens happens tournaments you can put good guy versus good guy with no explanation you can have a good guy jay uso versus john cena a good guy Ilya dragunov 
versus John Cena. Uh, the possibilities are endless. So then he'll win the King of the Ring, which will lead to a championship match at SummerSlam, which leads into the number nine thing that must happen. 17 world champions. That's right. At SummerSlam, because he wins the King of the Ring, he gets to fight for a world title, and that is where he gets his 17th title reign. We all thought it was going to be WrestleMania against Cody, but no, Cody won. He passed the torch, and he gets the 17th win at SummerSlam. That would be amazing, and nobody should ever touch the lucky number 17 after this. 17 is where it stops. John Cena becomes the 17th time world champion at SummerSlam, and then number 10, sadly, we're at the number 10 thing that must happen, and that is John Cena. He loses his final match. I am a big proponent of losing your final match. Oh, yeah, it's sad. It's sad, but you should go out on your back. One, two, three three and let it not be to someone like Cody Rhodes let it to be to a villain let it be a villain that could use it like Gunther let Gunther be the guy or Brian Breaker even be the guy that beats John Cena and he can then use that to propel himself throughout 2026. Now I know during Sting's retirement match in AEW, they let him win. A lot of people were really like happy. Like we know it's fake, so just let him have his moment. He gave us so much, but you know, maybe I'm just a little old school still. Let John Cena lose and let that be something that the winner uses just to further the WWE. And then we can have the next week the thank you so much, you're great, in-ring celebration of John Cena, and all 2025 is going to be a celebration. But also, though, I want to say that just because I want John Cena to lose on his way out, I don't want him to lose every single match. He's done his losses, all right? He's lost to Austin Theory. He's lost to Solo Sikoa. He's put over so many people. We don't need to continuously see that throughout 2025. I want to see some losses. I want to see some wins. I want to see a mixture of both. I want it to be just like his career. We don't need Super Cena, but we also don't need I'm the veteran on the way out. Until his last match, of course. So don't forget to comment below so you can win one of those belts or this belt. Tell me if I missed anything, something that you would add to this list that must happen for John Cena. I generally just, I, I love John Cena. And it took me a long time to get to this point in my life. But yeah, I acknowledge John Cena for his awesomeness. Just like I hope you acknowledge the subscribe button. You guys, you have a great day.